Hi, I'm Jared Glass and welcome to Gabaris This Week. The start of today's show may look a little different than you're used to. We're here atop the new parking deck here in downtown Concord. And with a little help from the Cabarrus County Sheriff's Office, we're showcasing a tool that helps law enforcement get a whole new perspective on public safety. We spoke with a few deputies on how the office uses the drone technology in a wide variety of situations. It's new technology and new technology is going to be continually used and, and for us it is provide us a new perspective on, in, on investigations, on um, handling scenes. As a crime scene investigator we use the drone for uh, aerial photography. The evidence is visible from the area, small evidence. It gives us a better overall picture of, of what the scene really looks like from above. We have dementia patients or um, children that wander off from home. It's uh, something we can put up almost instantaneously uh, to get eyes in the sky and start doing a, a search. We also will use them for accident reconstruction. We can fly the drone overhead, of course gets the overall picture of the scene, but we can also use uh, the measurements and stuff to do a 3D rendering. Uh, when we have a, uh, a tactical operation uh, with our SWAT team, um, what we've been using, utilizing the drone for is kind of a, an overwatch thing. So we got our command post, um, you know, well outside the area we're going into. Uh, we can put that up, uh, monitor our guys. It's just another way for us to monitor the safety of, of our people as well as the overall operation. All of our operators have gone through extensive training. We've received training through local community colleges on the flight operations, um, the FAA rules and regulations um, to operate drones. Then we each go through and actually get qualified and, and certified through the FAA as a UAV pilot. One thing is uh, all the radio towers uh, throughout the county, countywide, which we use our um, radios to communicate back and forth into our comm center. Uh, the radio tower, we'd have to hire an outside source, and typically that would be somebody that would just uh, physically climb the tower to go up there and, and look at it. But uh, that's something we can do now in-house, and um, it doesn't cost a thing. It's made things a lot safer for our deputies. Um, it's made things safer for us um, as we do investigations. Um, and it ultimately will benefit the county and benefit the citizens of Cabarrus County. That's some pretty cool stuff. Thank you to the Sheriff's Office for coming out and showing us some of their cool toys. Now we've been all been doing our part to help minimize the spread of COVID-19. And as testing ramps up, the number of confirmed cases will likely increase. After schools closed, local school nurses were reassigned to work with contact investigations for the Cabarrus Health Alliance. We spoke with Tammy Alexander, CHA's lead school nurse, about the process that comes after a positive test. Hi, I'm Tammy Alexander. I work for the Cabarrus Health Alliance as the lead school nurse. I'm typically assigned to Mary Frances Wall. I currently am working with the COVID response in doing some clinical investigations and contact tracing. Most of the time when people test positive for COVID-19, they're able to stay at home and manage their symptoms. If you're a Cabarrus County resident, you will receive a call from the Cabarrus Health Alliance and you'll be given some instructions on isolating. What that means is that you need to stay at home and you need to stay away from anyone in your house who is healthy and not COVID positive for a minimum of 10 days. The other part of that isolation is going to be that you have to be fever free without medication for at least three days with an improvement of your respiratory symptoms. So if you test positive for COVID, you get an isolation order that tells you to stay at home for at least 10 days. And the reason for that is to protect others in your household as well as others in the community. Make sure you monitor your symptoms. If your symptoms are worsening, you want to contact your health care provider so that you can get instructions. You always want to call ahead prior to going to any type of medical facility. Let them know that you have had a diagnosis of COVID-19. So we're finding that some people are asymptomatic, although they do have positive tests for COVID-19. If you have a positive test and you live in Cabarrus County, again, you'll receive a call from the Cabarrus Health Alliance. Your instructions will be to put yourself in isolation, so staying at home for a minimum of 10 days after your test date. If you were to develop symptoms, it's important that you follow up with your primary care provider and also with the Cabarrus Health Alliance, and that contact information will be provided to you. 
Contact tracing is an important tool that we use here at the Cabarrus Health Alliance and it's also used by many other pub public health agencies. Contact tracing means that we ask you during your interview of anyone who's been in close contact with you during a certain period of time. Those persons are then contacted to be told that they have had an exposure to COVID-19. None of your private information is shared, nothing personal about you is ever told. So you don't have to worry that we're contacting and saying who they were around, just that they had an exposure. We're then able to educate those contacts and give them information about self-quarantining so that we can hopefully decrease the spread of COVID-19 in our community. A close contact is being defined as a person that you've spent more than 10 minutes with within six feet of distance for um, the time period within 48 hours before symptoms start up until the present time that you've been told that you're pos positive for COVID. So it could be someone that you live with, it could be someone you work with, it could be someone that you were in a waiting room at a doctor's office with anyone that you've had that exposure to, so within six feet of distance for more than 10 minutes, would be considered a close contact. During our contact tracing, we get the names of those people and then we follow up with them. They are then told to self-quarantine at home for a minimum of 14 days. And that's important because we know that COVID can take up to 14 days for symptoms to develop. So as we're moving forward into phase one of our county reopening. We want to think of ways that we can protect one another and keep our community healthy. As you go into public, we want to wear a face covering. We want to make sure that we are maintaining social distancing, so at least six feet apart if we're waiting in line or if you're at work, maintaining that social distancing of six feet. We want to make sure that we're washing our hands often, washing hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, and keeping our hands away from our eyes is one of the best ways to prevent the spread of any disease or germs. If you have any questions, we want you to call us here at the Cabarrus Health Alliance. You can call 704-920-1213. We have nurses available to answer questions from 6 a.m. until 11 p.m. We just want to remember that if we stick together and we work together, we can keep our community healthy and help to just continue to flatten this curve. Thank you, Tammy. Now the rash of recent storms is a great reminder for us to prepare when severe weather strikes. Here's emergency management planner Jason Burnett with some helpful tips to keep you and your family safe. A few safety tips for the residents of Cabarrus County. One of the first things is to make sure that your cell phone is always charged. This ensures that in the emergency or an emergency that may occur, you can quickly get to uh, contact 911 to report uh, any type of situation that may be occurring. We also encourage you to have your cell phone to download any type of local forecast or weather apps that will help you in, in kind of planning for the, any type of severe weather that may be coming into Cabarrus County. Uh, we also encourage our residents to have a weather radio. This device is going to quickly alert people to any type of weather situation that may be occurring in the area, whether it's forecasted to come in or whether it's actually occurring within the individual areas of Cabarrus County. We also encourage our residents to develop a severe weather or disaster preparedness kit. Some of the few things to include with that are batteries, bottled water, medications, non-perishable food items, things that in the event of loss of power or other types of uh, incidents that may occur, you'll be able to quickly uh, have the items there as you may not be able to get to a local store to purchase those. Uh, additionally, we want to encourage you to make sure that your vehicle is, is fueled and that is, uh, the, the tank itself is full to ensure that in the event that you'd have to leave your residence, go to a shelter, uh, go to another location to stay at a, a family member's home, that that vehicle will allow you to get there with the appropriate amount of fuel. We also uh, recommend that uh, with the appropriate amount of fuel, you'll also be able to charge devices if you lose power at your home through uh, your vehicle's charging system. Uh, we also encourage you to develop a family emergency plan and let you practice that plan throughout the year so that everyone in your family knows how to properly respond to any type of severe weather that may be occurring. There's also some confusion uh, between a watch and a warning that we wanted to make sure the residents understand. A watch means that conditions are favorable for any type of weather that may be occurring in your area. And a warning actually means that those conditions are occurring in your area and that you need to become vigilant and be monitoring the weather situations that are occurring. Thanks, Jason. Well, that's the end of the show. Thanks so much to the Sheriff's Department, Tammy Alexander and Jason Burnett. You can learn about all these and other hot topics in our newsletter. To sign up, just go to cabarruscounty.us and type newsletter in the search bar. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Cabarrus County. 
You can catch all of our other programs, including Pam's Kitchen, Historical Moments, and more, streaming live at CabarrasCounty.us slash CabcoTV, or by downloading the ScreenWeave app for Roku and Apple TV. And until next time, stay home, stay healthy, and we'll see you then.